everybody, and welcome to Collider Movie Talk, movie talk for movie fans. I'm your host, Ashley Mova, and this is the daily show where we give you all of the latest news from the world of movies, plus a little bit of insight into what it all means. Joining us, as always, is John Campia. Well, greetings and salutations, everybody. Welcome to the best damn movie related show on the planet Earth, coming to you from right here at the Collider Video Studios here in Burbank, California. And any creative ideas you come up with while watching the show, I demand a co executive producer credit on. <laughs> also here, John Schnepp. I earlier vouched for a semi co executive producer <laughs> just by sitting at the table. So, I, you know, just uh, ship me the money, the, <laughs> the millions of dollars of whatever you're thinking about now. Also, here, Christian Harloff. I made that joke before the cameras went on, so I'm getting 10% of anything they make. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to talk about Fantastic Four. We're going to start off with Fantastic Four. Right. Uh, well, so yesterday. Only like two weeks after we should have been allowed to see the film, uh, a bunch of people got a chance to see Fantastic Four, which opens tonight in theaters, as a matter of fact. Uh, Christian and I had, have had a chance to see it. Actually, yeah, you saw it in the morning yesterday. Yeah. I saw it last night. I went with Dennis and Wendy, and we went to go see it. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about our thoughts on Fantastic Four. Now, the initial reviews are coming out pretty negative. At last I checked, it's been fluctuating. Last I checked, it was about 14% on Rotten Tomatoes. Um, Anyway, let's just start with you, Christian. Yeah. What did you think of Fantastic Four? Well, first of all, I saw your tweet yesterday, and I couldn't agree with you more as far as... This. It is definitely the best Fantastic Four that, as far as a film movie. Now, that's not saying much. Um, it's not a good movie. It's, it's really sloppy. However, I didn't hate it the way I thought I would. I really thought that I would go into this movie like with hatred, the way Mark Ellis did. Um, and I haven't heard Dennis' thoughts on it, too. But, I mean, but Mark hated this movie. For me, it, I thought that the first act was kind of set up, okay, the tone I thought was, was interesting, and I, I just wanted to see more development from these characters. And the characters weren't developed really at all. And once you get to the third act, I mean, the third act is a disaster. I mean, it is terrible. And the, the, my biggest gripe with the film is that it's not fun. It's, there's just no fun to it. Like Fantastic Four, and I'm not talking about Tim's story over the top fun. I mean a little bit of fun, whether it be Avengers fun or, or even Captain America type fun with jokes. There's none of that stuff. And then they try, it, it, it fails. Um, I, some of this, I thought that the CGI was not great. I thought some of the writing was pretty sloppy. But I was watching the movie, and as I'm watching I'm going, you know what? As just like a little sci-fi, almost like horror film, if it didn't have the name Fantastic Four on it, I'd probably watch it on cable and go, eh, was whatever um but it's, i think it's because it is the fantastic four and because the last two have been such a disappointment you watch this movie and go, they drop the ball again and they ruined doom i mean doom is ruined uh the, he looks stupid the i mean it, toby kebbell's a fantastic actor uh and and it just, yeah and it just it didn't i just thought the dynamic didn't work and the thing that i wanted to see i thought it was such a courageous choice and a great choice to have uh johnny johnny and uh and sue be for, uh, sue be adopted and i wanted them to explain that it's just kind of thrown in there and there's no reason like i want to, i want more develop that for me i want more of the characters give me more about victor von doom what it's just it was it was lazy and i think the problems on the set probably had a lot to do with it because it's short. The movie's like an hour and 45 minutes, and that's probably because, ooh, this is what we have. Put it together and let's get the hell out of here. Um, yeah, I, for a year, I bought into this film. Uh, I mean, I've talked about this a lot. I, I bought into it. The I like the writer, the director, the cast, all that kind of stuff. I started believing I liked the trailers, and then Fox sent up that big red flare in the air saying, our movie sucks by hiding it from the critics and hiding it from advanced viewers and, and banning or embargoing reviews until the day before the movie comes yeah. out. And at that point we went, uh oh, uh oh, this this smells awful. And you know, I went into the movie yesterday expecting the worst thing ever. And the first act of the film, I was like, I think Dennis said the same thing. Like the first act of the film, like, what's everybody talking about? This yeah. ain't bad. This is all right. Actually for an origin story this is, and I'm I'm kind of over origin stories. I don't really dig watching origin stories again. I would, I kind of would have rather the movie just was start. We assume, hey, Fantastic Four was formed six years ago, and here they are at the Baxter Building doing their thing. But as an origin story, it ain't bad. I like the the uh, you know the going back and you know, when they're kids and how they meet and all that kind of stuff. I thought that was cute. I think they tried to pass them off as like eighteen and nineteen years old, though, yeah. which was that was Kate Mara. Yeah, it's like, I know Kate Mara. She's so hot, by the she's way. She's really trying. Oh she's God. like thirty years old, isn't she? Uh, yeah, I mean, you, you can't pass them off as eighteen and nineteen year olds, and and then um, you know, there's you see this one scene in the trailer where Johnny Storm's dad, Doctor Storm, is saying Johnny can build anything, right? 
But then one of the, the first time you see him in the movie, this is a minor, minor, minor spoiler. It has nothing to do with the overall plot. First thing you see in the movie is a car that he's driving blows its engine. <laughs> so I was like, right. wait a minute, wait a minute. How am I supposed to trust this dude for building anything? Right. But, you know, the first act, not bad, but it wasn't, it had no pace to it. And it had no excitement to it and it had no fun to it. I thought it was really interesting. And I, I, I like, the, first of all, the dynamic between Johnny and Sue as a adopted siblings. I thought they just very subtly hinted some really cool things. There were some like, Johnny, I think, has some issues with the adopted daughter. Maybe he thinks she's the favorite. Right. They, they, it was very subtle and it was nice, but you're right. I would have liked to have seen that. It goes away. It yeah. just kind of disappears. I never felt any chemistry between any, maybe between Grimm and Reed. Maybe yeah. I felt some, some good buddy, buddy yeah. chemistry there because they spent a little bit of time on it in the beginning of the movie. But outside of that, the rest of the team, all that kind of stuff never felt it whatsoever. I didn't hate doom. Um, actually I think it was a very unique, different take they had on the dude. And you like the look of him. I, you know, when I stopped and thought about it, about the environment in which he was coming out of, we won't give spoilers, although we are going to do a spoilers review tomorrow after Schnepp sees the movie tonight. So that should be fun. Keep your eyes open for that tomorrow. I'm really excited to see it now, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot, everyone. Rotten Tomatoes, I appreciate ever, all your advanced criticism. But he, all of a sudden he's there, and then all of a sudden the movie's over. I mean, so th that was just weird. It just... It's that quick? Nothing. Yeah, it's just sloppy. It's, yeah, it, it's so underwhelming. There, it, there's a reason why Fox hid this movie. They hid it from everybody. They knew this movie was bad. They told us this movie was bad by hiding it from the critics. And, you know, it's... But I will say this, and it's what I tweeted. You alluded to this. I came out and I tweeted, well... It's better than the other two Fantastic Four movies. And I stand by that. It is. The, the rot, oddly enough, the Rotten uh, Tomatoes critic ratings of the other two are higher than this one. And I can understand that because it's like, I think it's a better movie. But I can't see anybody liking this movie. No one Whereas would go the, back and rewatch this. No, no. And in the other two movies, I'm like, okay, these movies are bottom of the barrel awful. But as being bottom of the barrel awful, I can see some people liking it. So that kind of makes sense. Yeah. This movie, but this is, I don't think any of you are going to enjoy this film. No, it's, it's just really depressingly bad. And about a year ago, we were talking about the, uh, the sequel, uh, how the sequel is announced. Yeah. And I said that I'd eat my shoe if it stuck to the actual date. And they already moved it a week anyway. But well, I, don't, I think they're going to move it regardless. I... I don't think Fox is going to give up on this. You think they're going to do a sequel anyway? Well, I mean, it'll all depend on the opening weekend. I mean, if the movie makes $50 million opening weekend, which I don't think it will, but if it makes $50 million opening weekend, I think they're going to move... I think they're going to trudge ahead with plans for another really? one. Really? I think that drop-off's going to be so big the second week. It, it probably will. Yeah. It, it probably will. And look, here's the thing, though. The first act was good enough, and the second act was okay... The second act was okay to the point where I'm going to go, look, this isn't a total disaster of a film. This isn't like, you know, bottom in the barrel, Transformers 4 bad. No. This isn't that bad. But considering how they spent a year getting me excited for the film, I, I can't remember being more disappointed in a movie in recent memory. Yeah. Like, no, I was really disappointed. I'm, I'm hearing stuff from other, other critics saying that scenes like in the trailer where the thing's dropping out of an airplane. Tons of scenes are yeah. not there. It's not even the in the baseball, film. When he's playing baseball. Really? A lot of stuff, too, yeah, that's he, not there. This is why I'm going back to where all those reports as where they had to do all those reshoots and everything. I think that they were scrambling for a long time of like, how do we make this thing work? And when, when the, the rumors of, of you know, Kinberg and, and Matthew Vaughn having to do stuff to try to clean this up as much as they can... You, when you see the movie, you start to buy into this stuff because it's like you, you, the, everything's missing. They don't know where to put it. It's it's you can tell see, when you look into it. I've also had I've heard a lot. I've heard rumors, some fairly credible rumors that um, the movie got approved. They're moving forward with an and after they were already in in pre production, getting everything ready, Fox came in and pulled three set pieces out of the movie mm -hmm. to lower the the budget and. The, then after seeing the movie last night, I'm like, I now I totally believe those rumors because this movie has no action beats. Right. It has no action beats. I mean, the only scene that I felt modestly exciting was there's a small and it's short action sequence that involves Reed Richards in a forest, and that looked pretty cool. I thought the yeah. way they, I, I yeah. thought that looked really good. But that's the only time we get to see Reed Richards doing anything. It's true. And even, I mean, even the way that they, not spoiling anything, but when they actually get their powers, I thought that wasn't handled too great either. Nope. Especially, especially Sue, that's all I'll say. 
Yeah, I, I completely agree. We will go more in depth into uh, – a lot more in depth into Fantastic Four after Schnepp has a chance to see the film tonight. We're going to do a spoilers review tomorrow, so keep your eyes open for that. All right, what's next? Sony Pictures has just released their full release schedule for the next few years. The list contains a number of surprises, including Bad Boys 3 and 4, scheduled for February 17, 2017, and July 3, 2019. John, what do you think about Sony's schedule? Um, it's A lot of it is very surprising, actually. I'm, like, I'm looking at the schedule, and first of all, Bad Boys 3 and 4. We've heard rumblings for a while that that may happen. So to see it actually now on, not only on the schedule, but number four being on the schedule as well. Um, that's pretty interesting. I think Will Smith is getting ready to go back to the things that made him really, really successful and really popular. And I think that's a really good move on his part. Um, we see him, like yesterday we talked about, I can't remember the name of the film now, but he just took over for Hugh Jackman. Collateral for, Beauty. Collateral Beauty, thank yeah. you. That <laughs> sounds more dramatic, and I think that's going to be great for, for him. Now he's going to mix that up with going back to kind of like the brainless, like wild action stuff with Bad Boys. I think that's a really nice move on his part. A couple of the other things that surprised me. Jumanji announced for December 2016. So that's that's intriguing that dude, they're doing that. We had heard about Underworld 5, and it, it looks like that's actually happening. Why? <laughs> I am, why? Patient Zero is really – we haven't talked a lot about Patient Zero, and it's the Doctor Who, uh, Matt Smith – uh, movie. It's, a, it's another zombie film, but it's like a, a mutated strain of the rabies virus. It turns people into these things, these, these maddening creatures called the infected that, it, that just attack everybody. But Matt Smith plays a guy who can speak their language. So he's got to help them find patient zero so they can maybe find a cure. That's pretty interesting. Uncharted, they've got it now. Let's, they've booked it for 2017. Let's see if they actually, actually stick to that. We've heard about uh, Barbie, Baby Driver, Resident Evil 6, of course, is on the way. A lot of very interesting things on here. As you looked at this list and heard about this, what stood out to you for Sony's upcoming schedule? Well, being a Resident Evil guilty pleasure mm -hmm. fan, I'm very excited that they're moving forward with Resident Evil 6. Um, and then The Dark Tower is actually something right? that I was like, you know, I'm, I'm really happy to see that finally scheduled. I don't know if they've ever decided they're going to do The Dark Tower and then a TV series, or is it just a movie now? You guys know? know it's been rumored so many different things. Like, right. like you said, I think Ron Howard had a lot to do yeah. with it at one point, right? Not I don't sure. even know. Yeah, if he's I don't still think attached. he's in there anymore. Okay. What stands out to you? Um, there's a couple. I mean, obviously, for me, it's Uncharted. That's the one I really want to see how that develops. It's one of my favorite video games of all time. Mm -hmm. I want the casting to go right. And I still am pulling for Warcraft to be that first one to start the video game boom. And hopefully, we're pretty thick into it when Uncharted happens. Uh, sorry, Schnapp. I could not care less about Resident Evil 6. Um, but Jumanji, Jumanji for me, <laughs> is one that I hope, I would have wished that it was like. I don't think you need to do a remake of Jumanji. I think you could do another sequel, like a new kid gets the game without having to do the same thing and the same characters. Like I, I don't think it's necessary, but I, st I would be interested to see a, a new take on it. Um, I don't know. Sony's, it doesn't seem too great yet. I'm not overly thrilled with Bad Boys yet because if Will Smith's going back to his old stuff, why didn't he go back to Independence Day? You know, is it just a money thing, I guess? Um, I think Independence I think Day was more issues. about his kid. Keeps trying to, to get his kid. kid is he going to be in movies. Bad Boys three and four too? Uh, I, maybe. I, I don't know yet. I'm, I was. I like Bad Boys one. I really enjoyed. It. I didn't care about two as much, but I know that there's a huge fan base for yeah, it. Yeah, a so lot of people love it, that. It movie. definitely makes sense to do it. Dark Tower. I agree with Schnapp. I think that Dark Dark Tower is one I really want to see. Uncharted. Um, what's the Lamb? Does anyone know what the Lamb? I'm is? unfamiliar with the Lamb. I don't know what the Lamb is. And so, but yeah, oh, Magnificent Seven. Oh, that's seven. another one yeah. I'm very excited about. Yeah, yeah, about. Magnificent Seven to see uh, Fuqua and Denzel do, do work together again. Mm -hmm. and, and, to and I think some... Chris Pratt is in that with yeah, them. Yeah, and Chris Pratt's also in Passengers, too. That's another yes, one. Yes, right. Passengers. Yeah. With that, which, by the way, it's not one of our stories today, but uh, Lawrence Fishburne, they also just announced just joined Passengers yeah. as well. So that's it's a very interesting slate, actually, here. You know, Sony... For you know, a studio that just a year ago, I mean, like it felt like every single day we were talking about Sony glum this, Sony bad news that. It's they have kind of really pulled themselves together. We've seen some cool things coming from them now. Now they release a slate. I think it's a very interesting, diverse looking slate. You, you know Kudos what it is also. Them. What it also is when you look at it, they're not trying to be Disney. They're not trying to yes. be universal yeah. here. And I think that that might be new people in charge here, too, because you look at these movies, even even the big budget ones they have with the Dark Tower or whatever they're doing, it's they're not just going superheroes or they're not right. going – it's because it, I don't see a Spider-Man. Very light on superheroes. Yeah, where's, where's, where's Spider-Man in this list, by the, the way? The I most think. superhero thing on there is Ghostbusters. Uh, right, right. So, I mean, 
And even that, that's what I mean. They're, they're setting, even though I'm not super excited about a lot of it, they're setting themselves apart mm-hmm. to where you know it's a Sony slate, as where it doesn't just kind of blend in with what DC and, right. and Disney's doing. So good for them. All right, what's next? Universal Pictures has put out a release announcing that the studio has just broken the (laughs) all-time single-year box office record for a studio. According to the release, Universal Films has already amassed $5.53 billion in box office returns, which breaks the previously held record of $5.52 billion by Fox Studios in 2014. The kicker here is that it's still only August. Universal has had some of the biggest films of the year, including Jurassic World, $1.562 billion, and Furious 7, $1.515 billion. Minions, $875 million. Fifty Shades of Grey, $570 million. And Pitch Perfect 2, $283 million. Christian, your thoughts on Universal's record-breaking run? Well, to quote Quicksilver, you didn't see that coming. Uh, <laughs> like it, you se- didn't see that coming? You, seriously, you man. You didn't see like, that coming? It, 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 <laughs> Let's like, all do it. Ashley, do yours now. You didn't see that coming? Yours are the best. The best. Count, Count Chocula. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you didn't see that coming, my <laughs> cereal? <laughs> 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 You didn't see that. All right. Uh, let's see. So I think that um, th- this this is crazy. I mean, a lot of the stuff to where we were talking about what movies were going to hit a billion. And John, I think you're the only one that even thought that Jurassic World had a shot at hit at one billion. I was like, I thought that opening weekend. No, I didn't see this happening. Not this, but I mean, this is this, <laughs> no. this thing's a beast, literally. And you have um, Fifty Shades of Grey, we knew would do well, but. That and you and and Fast and Furious doing what it did. I mean, they had movies that you said, "Oh, that could do fairly well," but not the right. numbers that it's. Oh, I mean, they have three movies like that that I just look at right away, and you go, "Jurassic World, wow! Pitch Perfect too, wow!" Yeah, I mean, all these movies, good for them. What a year! No one would have predicted that they would have had this kind of year. So, I mean, it's it's pretty mind boggling, and it also makes me start to think about it as far as, as Star Wars goes, talking about that we're going to do a show a little later on Star Wars, um, <laughs> that it makes me, because th- they're starting to project these big numbers for Star Wars, people are really rushing out to see particular movies that they really want to see. Universal proves that. So maybe Star Wars is going to have that record-breaking year that we think it is. I mean, l- let's put this in perspective. They've broken the record, w- which, you know, Ashley was reminding us that I remember when we did the story about how Fox back in 2004, we did this story earlier in 2015 because Fox had broken the record in 2014, biggest box office year ever for a student. We thought, man, it's going to be a while before somebody breaks that. They had to have a lot of lightning in a bottle in a row for that to happen, blah, blah, blah. Universal now breaks that record. It's only August. Yeah. It's only August. Universal still has to come. I wrote these down. They still have straight out of Compton coming that's opening up here pretty quick they still have everest which is a new trailer just dropped for that which could make them some money they've got the new tina fey amy Amy puller movie sisters coming they've got the guillermo del toro you know spooky film crimson peak they got the steve jobs movie still all these are still coming this year like this is by the end of the day this is going to be absolutely ridiculous and you know wendy and dennis and i were talking about this last night it's like when you think about all the major studios like Universal kind of feels like the little brother in many ways, but not anymore. Little brother got the big stick. Yeah, let's let's just hope sisters doesn't lose them all that money. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, <laughs> snap. Yeah, I did not see that coming. <laughs> no, I, I didn't see it coming. I mean, they every single one of their films overperformed what I think any one of us thought it would, which is a pretty fantastic, especially with a uh, Jurassic. Except World. maybe Minions. I, I kind of thought Minions would join the billion dollar club. But and if it had gotten decent reviews, I think it would right. have too. But still, eight hundred and fifty something million dollars yeah, closer to a billion right. yeah. than, <laughs> than a lot not. of other films ever get. So, yeah, I mean, I don't know what to say. I mean, it's uh, happy to hear that Universal's doing really well because you know they were like uh, they were like CBS or whatever you know of the big three. You know, <laughs> ABC and NBC are always dominating. What happened to CBS? They're un- you know they're they're still fighting. You know, right. so it's good to hear. All right, folks, we've reached out part of the show now for buy or sell. Here's how this works. In front of her ass, she's got a few other items in the world of movie news. She's going to run them down. Then those of us at the table are simply going to say whether we buy it or sell it. So, Ashley, what do we got? A new and final Red Band trailer for the upcoming video game movie Hitman Agent 47 has just hit the web. A genetically engineered assassin, played by Rupert Friend, targets a mega corporation that wants to use the secret of his origin to create a whole army of killers. Hitman Agent 47 hits theaters on August 21st. Schnepp Byers saw this new trailer for Hitman Agent 47. 
I'm going to buy the trailer. I like the Red Band trailer, and I like the action scenes that they've shown in the film. Like I've said before, I'm a big Hitman video game franchise. I've played every single game all the way through, done all the levels. I love the game. This feels like a, not just like I'm watching a version of the game, but it feels like they've taken some of the elements from the Hitman series that I love, incorporated them into the film. I think Rupert Friend is great as Agent 47. He's like an you know, steely-eyed assassin. That's what you want out of this character. But, you know, I can't wait to see it. That's all I can really say is, you know, this trailer showed me just enough to make me want to see it opening night. So Yeah, the interesting thing here is that, you know, yesterday we talked a little bit about Age of Four Seven because one of the emails had come in and was asking about, like, how come you guys aren't talking about Age of Four Seven? Is maybe reinvigorating the the the, uh, the video game movie genre? Why is it got to be Warcraft? And I said, well, because Hitman was already movie and it wasn't any good, you know. And and, and a friend of ours, we talked about this yesterday. A, a friend of ours um, is the producer of that original Hitman that wasn't very good, and he's a producer on this new one too. But just because he's a friend of ours, we're not going to say that a bad movie was a good movie. It was a bad movie. And and that's why I think even though the trailers have been pretty good up till now, it's been flying under a lot of people's radars, deservedly so. Let's see if the movie turns out good. But I have liked the trailers up till now. I gotta tell you, I really like this trailer. I thought it was great from the first moment when the, those soldiers are walking in from behind. You see those giant metal clamps come down and sever their heads. Yeah. Like, wait a minute. And you know what? I totally forgot this movie was rated R. I totally forgot. It's, it's almost like I think Fox is starting. We look at it with Deadpool. Fox at some point has decided, you know what? Let's embrace the genre R-rated movies and let's go that way with it. So Agent 47 Hitman is an R-rated film. I like this Red Band trailer. Um, a lot of us, I think, don't forget too, you know who was supposed... Robert Friend, Friend does look like a really good Agent 47. Do you remember who was supposed to be Agent 47? No. Paul Walker. Oh, wow. Ooh, Paul Walker wow. was was booked to be Agent 47. Uh, so it's kind of interesting to wonder how it would have been. I did not like the look of him at first, but I'm I'm totally on board with him now as age. Now I see him and I see Hitman. So I'm really excited about that. Yeah, I'm not going to call this the best trailer of the year by, by any stretch of imagination. But I'm very enthusiastic for it. I saw it. I liked it a lot. It's my favorite trailer that they've had so far. So, yeah, for me, it's a buy. I buy the trailer, but I have I have a problem with it. And that's, I. you said that you've seen enough to where you're excited. I think I've seen too much again. Mm. Like, it's like, I'm guessing already that... From what I've seen is, I guess, is that Quinto is the bad guy? I thought he was the good guy. And whether or not you're supposed, I mean, you're supposed to think that or not. I'm not as familiar with the Hitman video game, so I don't know if he's good or bad. I would assume that he's a Hitman the way that they set it up in the beginning here, that he is bad. And I agree with you guys. I love the tone of it. And you have to take this movie to a rated R. I'm glad that they did. I loved, it didn't look just gratuitous. It looked like, okay, that's what this guy does. It's like crazy born off the, off the maps type Hitman right. guy. But now, by the way that it looks like at the end, okay, so I'm going to be rooting for him towards the end. I would have liked to have gone through that watching it in the theater, but as far as the the showing me, I agree, John, this is the best trailer they've had so far because I care about the story now. I didn't mm. care as much about the story before, um, and I cared about the story a minute into it, and then by two minutes into it, I was like, okay, I think I've seen the whole movie. I hope I'm wrong, but I do want to see the film, and I think it was a great trailer, and I do think what's his name, the guy's playing? Uh, Friend. Rupert Friend. Rupert yeah, Friend. I, think, I think that he looks great as the lead character, so... Um, yeah, let's let's see. It's only got a couple of weeks. All right, what's next? Speaking of new trailers, the very first trailer for the upcoming Anthony Hopkins, Colin Farrell, and Jeffrey Dean Morgan film Solace has hit the web. A former doctor with psychic abilities named John Clancy, played by Hopkins, is drawn into a serial killer case only to find that the killer, played by Colin Farrell, is also psychic, leading to a showdown between the two who can detect each other's every move. The Watchmen's Jeffrey Dean Morgan and Limitless's Abby Cornish also star co-star. John Byers sell this trailer for Solace. Was completely unaware of this movie till the trailer dropped, and and I'm I'm in. I'm totally in. I really like the look of it, and I'm so glad to see Jeffrey Dean Morgan. In Mor Jeffrey Dean Morgan is a guy who you could do an entire episode, I think, just talking about why was Jeffrey Dean Morgan never breakthrough to become the A-lister? I think he could have been. Rugged, good looks, super talented, can do funny, can do action, can do drama, all that kind of stuff. So I don't know. And, and you know, even though he was in Watchmen and uh, a lot of other really cool stuff, he will always be John Winchester to me uh, from Supernatural. Anyway... So that was cool to see. I like the story, the premise. Colin Farrell can't be in enough stuff as far as I'm concerned. Um, this looks like a really interesting role for Anthony Hopkins as well. I bought into it. I think this is going to be like a Science of the Lambs kind of thing. There's no release date yet for the U.S., which I'm very sad about. But as soon as we hear about one, we'll let you know. I'm, I'm looking forward to it, and that's what a trailer's supposed to do. So for me, it's a buy. 
Yeah, for me, it's a hard sell. I felt like I was watching an episode of some kind of cheesy CSI. Ooh, look, he's got spooky psychic powers. Like he touches a Frito. This person was eating Fritos, but underwater. You know, it's, I don't know. I just everything about it, I hated. I just one of the. Sometimes I just get that reaction off of the first like ten seconds, and then all the rest of the film was like that. It just. Well, what are they going to do now? Oh, is he going to? And then the shot of him like out in the out in the you know wilderness touching daisies. Oh, I just. I hate it. <laughs> it's so Great. funny. I buy it, but it's funny because I almost feel like I have a version of you on my left shoulder and a version of, your, uh, of Schnepp on my right because I was watching it and I had both thoughts. I'm watching one point. I'm like, this could be like seven. I'm like, yeah. this really could be like seven. Oh, yeah, it's got Colin Farrell, one of the most underrated uh, actors out there. It's got Jeffrey Dean Morgan, another underrated actor, the master himself. And then I started thinking about other movies that Hopkins has been in that have went, woohoo, oh, yeah. on the other side. Yeah. And then I started thinking TV movie. Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, man, this is something my mom would watch. Like, did you catch that thing on Lifetime last night? <laughs> right. Really good. He was um, touching daisies, and he saw right. the people's thoughts. You think that could happen on my coffee? Um, so wa- so as, I'm, as I'm watching this. <laughs> i got to meet your mom someday. I want your mom to really sound like <laughs> that. She does. It's like, oh, uh, good for you. Um, but watching, I, I have hopes that because of the talent involved that we're going towards this area here, that it's going to be a good movie, that people are going to go, oh, my God, did you actually catch that uh, solace? I mean, who would have thought that was coming? But you're probably going to go towards because it's, it's so under the radar I have radar a premonition. Already, you know, it's directed yeah. video. Usually, <laughs> usually movies like this that hit, people have seen already and have been like, Wait for that one. It comes out. They've seen him at festivals. Right. They've seen him already. You've heard word about it. It's like it's going to knock your socks off. You've heard nothing about this movie, but I'm optimistic and I'm still going to buy it. But I, but I agree with you. It's an all star cast. Everyone in yeah. it is yeah. incredible. It could, it could be terrible. You're right. Yeah, let's, let's see. All right, what's next? Speaking of Colin Farrell, the Hollywood reporter is now reporting that the Irish actor has signed on for the upcoming Harry Potter universe film, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. According to the report, Farrell will play a wizard named Graves, who Newt Scamander, being played by Academy Award winner Eddie Redmayne, meets in New York. The film follows Newt Scamander, the wizarding world's preeminent magizoologist, who in his travels has encountered and documented a myriad of of magical creatures, ultimately leading to his penning of the Hogwarts School textbook, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. Christian Byers saw the addition of Colin Farrell to Fantastic Beasts. Huge buy. Um, I am, he's one of my favorite actors out there, and I, I, just, I want him to have more roles to where he stands out. I still think that he should have been nominated for Saving Mr. Banks. Absolutely. He was one of the standouts. He was just totally mm-hmm. overlooked, passed by, and I think it's because it's just something. He's just one of those guys. He's great in everything he's in, even that god-awful winner's tale which was horrendous um he was great in it he's always good and i want a total recall remake he was great in that too so and true detective this season he says he's he's the most he's the best part about that show so to have him involved it reminds me of when they brought in gary oldman he's just another guy that elevates it and he won't steal all the scenes and he won't it it won't take you so out of oh that's colin farrell he's a he's a chameleon he really is Mm -hmm. and he's able to do these things so i think that he would add to the Wizard Universe. I'd love to see him in it, and I'm glad they got him. Yep. Yeah, in Bruges is another oh, man, oh, so yes. favorite, Great. favorite performances he's in. Um, yeah, I buy him as a magizoologist. Is that it? Magi- magic <laughs> zoologist magi- or magi? Magi- magi- zoologist. Magi- magi- zoologist. J.K. Rowling's, how do you even come up with stuff like this? <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm glad to see him in this and not premonitions. Or I'll probably see him in this and not premonitions. Solace. 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 <laughs> um, I am so glad you brought up Saving Mr. Banks because I remember when that movie came out and I went to go see it. It's like, wait a minute, Colin Farrell's in this? They didn't even put him in the marketing yeah. right, of the movie. Right. All the marketing for Saving Mr. Banks was Tom Hanks and Emma Thompson. And, and deservedly so. And then you watch the movie, you've got two iconic actors in Tom Hanks and Emma Thompson. Colin Farrell owns that movie. Yeah. He he's he outshines everybody in that movie, and it's just incredible. In Bruges, stuff like that. I even liked him as Bullseye in yeah, Daredevil. He was he great was in a that. Great he was a great Bullseye. He made me miss. I like. He was <laughs> awesome in that. I thought so. Like, yeah, I, I'm. I'm. He's one of the reasons I'm excited about Solus. One of the reasons. And look, the cast they're putting together here already with Eddie Redmayne playing in the lead. Yeah. They're putting together a very impressive looking cast, and I went from feeling how they're really going to continue suckling on the teat of Harry Potter like this, but this is forming into something that I think we can be legitimately excited about. So yeah, so for me, it is going to be a buy. Do we know whether this is going to be like a six-part movie series? I 
I think that's always their hopes. It's always six, really. No, no, I, I, like they haven't said six or anything like oh. that. But I think when as soon as you introduce something like that, look, every studio these days they're thinking franchise with every movie right. they put out. And if you're going to put out this that happens like 80 years before Harry Potter, there's lots of time for them to do it lots is. of sequels. begin the, the milking. Character. Yeah, yeah the only right. thing is, didn't she write J.K. Rowling? Didn't she write a big treatment for this one already though too? Because I mean, the the, the thing that makes me nervous about it is that they were the reason the other the other the Harry Potter movies were so successful and good was because they were based off these what eight. Uh, novel or seven novels. Seven. Um, and so I'm worried about them doing that to where if it's just one big treatment and they did make one or even two movies out of, okay, but if they start taking five or six and there's no books or anything else to it and she's not writing the, the overall story, that makes But me she is nervous. writing the overall story. I mean, she wrote the screenplay for this well, film. Well, sure, so. but I mean, I mean one, and t- one or two, but when he started going, oh, those were really great. JK, like, like sit down another one. treatment for... But I have well, a feeling she wrote it with I think she sat down and wrote this with future ones in mm, mind. Yeah. So let's see if the well, first one's worth it or not. I bet she was like, a, hey, write a screenplay. It's easy. It's like 120 right. pages. Yeah, Try I'm writing used to a book. 800 yeah, pages. Right, yeah. All right. What's next? Little has been known about the upcoming Marvel film Doctor Strange, other than who some of the key players are. Now the film's director of photography, Ben Davis, is giving us a little bit of insight into what we can expect from the film. In a recent interview with Screen Daily, Davis said the following, Most of the work within it is about other dimensions, and I described it, I think, when I was talking to Marvel as Marvel's Fantasia in a way, because it's so sort of out there and different to everything else that they've done. There's a lot of pre-visualization, and there's a lot of work which is very hard. You look at it, and you see the imagery that they've created for it, and you think, well, how the hell do we shoot that? (laughs) Schnett Byrus sell Ben Davis's comments about Doctor Strange. I love these comments so much. Being a giant Doctor Strange fan, hearing that just makes me so excited to know that they're going to go into all these different dimensions. And if you are not familiar with Doctor Strange, (laughs) Google Doctor Strange and then Steve Ditko, and you'll see what we're talking about. These kinds of crazy imagery that were in the comics in the 60s and that a whole bunch of other artists and writers just expounded upon and added to. You'll see the mindless ones. You'll see Dormammu's realm. You'll see the hoary hosts of Hoggoth if you're lucky. But uh, (laughs) it's so creepy and strange and weird and trippy. So to know that they're comparing this to Disney's Fantasia, what what that comparison is basically saying we're going to go to all these different realms, all these different styles in this film. We're going to go to all these different dimensions. So I'm beyond excited. I'm very curious to see, you know, the way they describe this. Well, first of all, already this Disney and Marvel have lost Mark Ellis by calling it oh, yeah. their Fantasia. <laughs> um, but I mean, I'm rabidly curious because when they start talking about all his wild stuff, it's, it's mostly other dimensions. It's like, really? Mostly other dimensions? Like, even when they did the first Thor, they thought, can okay, we want to show Asgard and some other realms, but we got to keep our feet planted on Earth. Because I remember the, that one quote, we got to keep our feet planted mm-hmm. on Earth. It sounds like this. Eh, we're going, it's, this is mostly going to be other dimensions. We're going to be all this kind of wild stuff. So it's going to be really cool to see how they form this movie and yet make it feel like an integrated part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. That's going to be a, the key to making this work. And if they can do that, and I'm sure they've got a plan, then it's going to work on all a fire on all energy. So I'm excited. And what it continues is that the last two Marvel films have been the most unique films. With Captain America Winter Soldier, uh, which was a very unique film with its very distinct style, time like 70s thriller. Then you got Ant-Man, which is very much, very much a heist film. Now we're going to talk Doctor Strange, which is going to be really apparently very different from anything else they've done, too. Uh, they're changing things up, and that's always a risk. But Marvel takes risks. What do you think? Um, yeah, I buy them as well, too. And I was going off your point. That's, uh, I, would, I would argue that the last three, I mean, even throwing Guardians of the Galaxy, which right. is space yep, opera. And absolutely. So, and, yeah, and good they're, point. They're sticking to their mantra. Is where they, We are going to whatever these... Wherever the world of these comics were set and what made them popular, we're not only going to do that for films, but we're also going to show you that Marvel as a brand does different genres of film. Look who they brought in to, I mean, to, to, bring, to direct this thing. You know, as far as uh, it's Derrickson. And yeah, yeah. To, have, to have him with that horror background and setting up other dimensions. And I think that they almost gave you that preview in Ant-Man of what it's going to look like, right. too. Because there's a part in the movie in Ant-Man to where they even tease that other dimension, I think. So, um when you have them already giving you a little bit of tease of that, and then you're going to have someone like Cumberbatch doing this movie, he fits in great to the other dimensions yeah. already. I think he lives in other dimensions. <laughs> um, he's great. So, uh, yeah, I think these comments are, are amazing because that's what I want to see from a Doctor Strange. Strange. I want to see strange yeah. stuff happening in a strange movie. Yeah. So um, I'm all for it. I love the comments. Shep, if you had to guess, though, like, 
the style they're going to go for in this. What which direction do you think Marvel's going to take as far as style goes for a Doctor Strange? And what would you like to see them do? Well, I would like to see, uh, like you, you mean, as far as how they portray the dimensions. Yeah, I would love to see like a kaleidoscopic type of. Uh, Almost like certain dimensions can be almost like, you know, that 60s, 70s acidy type of, uh, you know, multi filtered, you know, you know, composited kind of super trippy kind of stuff. And then other dimensions can be very uh, Escher esque. Mm. I mean, I think by going into these different styles that we just, you know, we're familiar with already from all the hundreds and hundreds and thousands of years of art and different styles. When we even talk about like, Oh, da, you know, Dadaism or, or you could say Dolly. And I, you instantly think of like, Oh, a melting clock with, you know, you know, a, a giraffe on fire and all this other weird imagery, <laughs> you know, you could say these different things about abstract art and people instantly have a, an idea of what you're in your mind, what you're familiar with. So I think Dr. Strange by going and, and tapping into that Steve Ditko kind of trippy artwork from Marvel that he created, they already have this entire world. And then now it's just deciding how they're gonna how they're gonna bring it to life. How are they gonna portray it? Will will, will we go totally trippy and acidy for this thing? And and Dormammu's world will be more solid and kind of almost like sinister, like you know, realistic and creepy but upside down. You know, we don't know. But I think it's gonna it's gonna be a lot of fun. I think they're gonna have a lot of fun making this film. All right, folks, well, it's time for the Thursday installment of opening this week. Now, on Tuesday, we told you about two of the films opening this week in The Gift and The Fantastic Four, but there are two other films opening wide. Ashley, what do we have? First, we start off with the new Meryl Streep film, Ricky and the Flash. It's been a roller coaster ride for Ricky Rendazzo, played by Streep, a one-time wife and mother of three who left her family behind to follow her dreams of rock and roll stardom. Now the singer and guitarist must face the music when she returns home to Indiana to reconnect with ex-husband Pete, played by Kevin Klein, troubled daughter Julie, played by Streep's real-life daughter Mammy Gummer, and engaged son Josh, played by Sebastian Stan. Filled with regret, Ricky hopes to find redemption for all of the bad choices that she made in the past. Ricky and the Flash opens on 1,800 screens nationwide. Next up is the animated film Shaun of the Sheep. When Shaun decides to take the day off and have some fun, he gets a little more action than he bargained for. A mix up with the farmer, a caravan, and a very steep hill lead them all to the big city, and it's up to Shaun and the flock to return everyone safely to the green grass of home. <laughs> Shaun of the Sheep opens on 2,200 screens nationwide. Wide. John, which of these films are you looking forward to? Well, to clarify, it's called Sean the Sheep, not Sean oh, of the I Sheep. Of the dead. To be confused, Sean, Sean of the Dead. <laughs> Where are the I'm zombie sorry, sheep? Yeah. Yeah. I was waiting this to see it. This is a horror film, the first horror brought to us by the same play on words. It's They're eating words. brains, Gromit. They're eating brains. <laughs> Eating a biscuit. <laughs> um, yeah, it's uh, it's look very full weekend. Like uh, opening tonight, so we've got obviously Fantastic Four, we got the gift, and also Ricky and the Flash and Shaun the Sheep. I, I have not seen Shaun the Sheep yet. You have, so you can speak a little bit more to that yeah. in a second. I I'm look, I'm always up for watching you know art art and stuff. I mean, yeah. I just think they do some really cool stuff. The trailers have not thrilled me. I have not been excited by them. But I'm always curious to see what these guys do, so I'll be checking that out. I saw Ricky and the Flash, and we had Ricky and the Flash's screenwriter, uh, Academy Award winner Diablo Cody here in studio. I, I like the film. I really do. It's a very small, intimate film, just a couple of locations. Rick Springfield plays Ricky's new love interest, which was actually pretty cool to see. Uh, he was actually better than I thought, because I remember seeing him in... Damn, what was that David Duchovny show? Uh, California And he was just in, he's in True, True Detective season two, and he was great. Oh, I didn't see him in True yeah. Detective yet. Okay, I'm only a couple of episodes into that. I, I quite enjoyed Ricky and the Flash. It's not a movie that's for everybody, but it's one that I actually really did quite enjoy. And uh, I'll be checking out Sean the Sheep, even though I don't think they've done a great job marketing that film. So I don't know how well it's going to pop this this weekend. Anyway, you did see Sean the Sheep. Out of these films, which ones do you look for? Sean the Sheep. Uh, really? Yeah, and I and I and I, I'm very because I know your taste as far as animation goes. I can't wait to hear what you think. I think that you're gonna love it. I really do because oh, it's, that's good to hear. It's clever. It's really clever. There's no dialogue in it from anybody, from the sheep, from the humans, nothing. Oh, awesome. and, really? And it's, and it's that's done, cool. It's just like that kind of stuff, like peanut style. But it's but it's the way they work with music, and it's still it works. There's and what they have in it. What I really like is that there's a lot of references. That kids like my I took my three and a half year old who loved it by the way and but there are references to certain movies that you're gonna know right away and it just went right over her head but I'm like that's 
awesome that they did that. And they gave me a lot to work with. They gave the kids a lot to work with. Um, and it has that, it, it just, it's that same rhythm that these guys have done right. throughout their career. So I really, I agree that the marketing hasn't been that great, but it's opening in a lot of theaters. Yeah, 2,200 theaters. Yeah, yeah. so, um, I think that it just it needs to make enough. The, the the good news is that it doesn't have to make that much because it's, it's the amount that it costs yeah. to make the movie. But I think it'll do it. I, I think that people are going to – word of mouth for this movie so far has been great. Um, I'm hopefully one of those people that is helping. Um, I liked Ricky and the Flash. Uh, I didn't love it. I thought that it was very predictable. Um, I think that the murder she wrote audience is going to love it. Uh, but I don't think that it's necessarily an, an a, a – a lot. I don't think a lot of our, our audience is going to be running out to see Ricky and the Flash. And I think that it is. Well, the one thing I will say about Diablo Cody's writing is that most of the people that she writes, it, it, they're more realistic characters as far as the way that they react, the way that because because Ricky's a despicable character for the most part. She's not a. She's not a. You don't like her in the same way that Charlize Theron was in. What was the last the last. Uh, the one that the Jason Reitman she did not oh a young adult young adult so the way that she writes the characters I do like her writing but again I just felt that it was a bit predictable toward the end to me it was just like oh, come on but other than that it, it's the street monster it's the street acting monster and you know what killed me when when uh, Diablo was in she telling us Streep plays all of her own music in it obviously she does all of her own sing singing but all the guitar playing that's her playing it. And there's even a scene in the movie where it's just her sitting in a living room playing the guitar, singing this song. And then Diablo said, yeah, she just four months before we started shooting the movie, she goes, I'm going to learn how to play guitar so I can play my own guitar. She learned to play guitar yeah. in four months. And then watch her in this. It actually kind of blows your mind a bit. So, Schnapp, you're looking at these two movies, right. Shaun of the Sheep or Ricky of the Flash. Of the Sheep. Which, <laughs> Ricky of the Flash. Which, which one are you looking forward to the most? Uh, both of them, as long as zombies are in both of them. No, you know what? I am looking forward to seeing both of them. Uh, when I, I didn't know what Ricky and the Flash was. I saw posters for it. And then I, when I heard that Diablo Cody wrote it, I instantly was like, that's on my radar. I'm going to see that just because I like the way her writing style. And I love Meryl Streep. So for those two reasons, I'm going to see that film. Sean, Sean of the Sheep. <laughs> Sean the Sheep. Sean the Sheep. When I saw those pictures just today, I wanted to see it. Those two stills <laughs> sold me on seeing it more than the trailer did. You know? Yeah. I just was like, wow, I can't wait to see this film because those two – Images made me feel like I think happy. you guys, will, yeah, I think you guys will dig it. You it does make you feel happy. This is yeah. interesting though. You mentioning that there's practically no dialogue in the film that makes me a little bit more understanding of it because then they probably had so little footage to work with to try to put a trailer yeah. together. So maybe that explains why I haven't been impressed mm. with the trailers. Good to know. All right, folks, that will do it for us. We're all out of time here on Collider Movie Talk. Thank you so much for joining us. Listen, don't forget. Lots of great the theaters playing. Lots of great movies are playing at our friends over at AMC Theaters. Head on over to www.amctheaters.com for all of your theater, showtime, and movie ticket information. If you want an audio-only version of this episode, look in the description of this video, and you'll find links to our podcast feed for a limited time, so you can check us out there for your driving to work or while you're at the gym or doing whatever else when you're supposed to be doing something else. Uh, I And also, don't forget subscribe to this YouTube channel. Just click on the subscribe thing. Keep up to date with everything going on here at the world of Collider Movie News and bookmark Collider.com. Stay up to date with everything going on in the world of the movie news with our uh, partner website, Collider.com. I want to thank the guy sitting at the table with me. First of all, sitting over here, John of the Schnepp. Schnepp, where can people find you online? <laughs> uh, John of the Campia. Someone told me recently, isn't there like a Collider Facebook page? That people yes, should there click is. On? People, should follow, people should like our Collider Facebook page. By all means, find us on Facebook. Thank you for bringing that up. But I just thought I'd you know give the extra plug. Um, here's a plug. Uh, at Twitter, at Instagram, at John Schnepp, at TDOSLWH. And in Australia next week is where I and Holly Payne shall be at the Hayden Orpheum in Sydney, Australia. So if you guys want to check out The Death of Superman Lives, what happened in a theater in Australia, if you happen to be in Sydney, that's where we'll be on Wednesday, August 12th, screening our film. So, oh, you OCs, come on out. This is the worst OC impersonation I could do. <laughs> Bobbies, Bobbies, shrimps on the Bobbies. Wow, we just uh, lost all of our Australians. I know. All the Australians were like, I'm going to find you, Schnapp, and skin you alive. And I hear that everybody who successfully navigates alive all the fox, bats, and pythons in the parking lot, you get 50% off your tickets. Oh, that's those not, things are scaring that's me. That's not true at all. Oh. All right, sitting over here, Mr. Christian Harloff. Christian, where can people find you? Well, obviously today... 
Collider Jedi Council, which we are going to have myself. And <laughs> we got people working on our air conditioner on the roof. And we yeah. keep hearing all this. Is that what that is? Uh, Jedi Council, myself, Mark, Ellis, and John Campy will be on today. We're taking all your questions. Make sure you follow me, Twitter, uh, Christian Harloff, and Instagram. And it's time. Tonight, we are going to be having the ultimate showdown battle. And the man himself sitting next to me, John Campia and Tiffany Smith, are going to be having a movie trivia battle against JTE and Finstock. And the, the trash talk has been amazing. Well, I mean, look, somebody asked me, John, are you going to make Team Bob your bitch? <laughs> and I said, that's ridiculous. That would imply that I was first going to take them out and treat them to a nice dinner, which I'm not. So, <laughs> so watch that tonight. It's going to be 6 p.m. on uh, Schmoes. And, of course, our lovely host today, Miss <laughs> Ashley Mova. Ashley, where can people find you? On Twitter and on Instagram, at Ashley Mova. Happy Thursday, guys. <laughs> and, of course, you can follow me on all the various social media networks on Facebook and on Twitter, just at John Campia. Thanks a lot for joining us, guys. My name is John Campia for Collider Video, and until next time, bye-bye.